Welcome to Being a Successful Leader with Carl Welty. Carl is a leadership pioneer with years of challenging leadership and consulting experience. Here's Carl with some valuable insights, practical and proven methods for being a successful leader. Greetings, Carl Welty here, your host for the uh, podcast, Being a Successful Leader. 26 episodes centered around three, what I call uh, imperatives, leadership imperatives. Uh, One is to be a skillful, self-aware leader. Leadership starts with you as the leader, and you need to be in touch with yourself and and, uh, be skillful about that. We covered that uh, already in this episode. The second one is uh, uh, then to have a sound strategy, to formulate and execute a sound strategy. Uh, just uh, who the heck are we? Uh, you know, what, why do we exist? And uh, what do we stand for? And then we launch off of that and uh, have a set a direction. Where are we going? What's it look like when we're there? And how are we going to get there? And then the final dimension of my three dimensions and my strategy framework, which we're using to go through this uh, setting a sound strategy, is to execute the strategy. And then the final of the three imperatives is to uh, have a, a, a team, a, uh, create a culture of commitment, people who want to follow uh, the sound strategy. Uh, so those are the three, uh, being in touch with yourself, uh, a, a self-aware, skillful leader, having a sound strategy, and then building a culture of commitment. Uh, 26 episodes, each one running from 15 minutes to a half hour. And uh, you can uh, I strongly advise you to visit the website, wealthy.com. Uh, two reasons. One is to uh, you can go back and, and visit uh, previous uh, episodes by just going to leadership resources on the website and then scroll down to the uh, podcast. Just click on uh, the podcast there and then pick the episode, uh, if any, that you want to uh, revisit or to visit for the first time. The second reason is that you'll see my books there, my three books, and the one we're working with now is uh, being a, uh, a building and, and uh, a uh, your dreams as a leader, building and fulfilling your dreams as a leader. And the strategic framework uh, is a is the heart of that, and that's what we're working through now. So it makes a dynamite uh, combination if you have the book, and then we talk about it here, and it each adds to that experience. And the book uh, will be with you for an ongoing reference, plus it gives you more details and graphs and charts and that sort of thing. So uh, I recommend highly that you do that. Uh, okay, let's get started with today's topic. Uh, it is crafting and a translatable, actionable vision, translatable action vision. And uh, that's important because, uh, uh, and, and it, it's, it's really a... a uh, great, uh, innovative piece. My, my friend and colleague, Alan McCarthy, came up with this. Rather than just have a fuzzy vision, uh, abstract, you know, we need to have something a little bit concrete so we can drive off of the, the vision and begin to craft strategies to drive forward. So that was the, uh, last episode. Remember, we did the situation analysis, which, which I did. I recommend what I call factor analysis, where you and your leadership team identify the key factors in your external environment that represent the trends, the challenges, and the opportunities, and then to uh, uh, agree on the few critical areas of strategic focus. You don't want a lot. You just want a a few that really represent the key things you need to shoot at, Uh, and that's the factor analysis. And then uh, what we do here, then, is to take the uh, whatever you identified there and expand those, let's say half a dozen uh, or so uh, areas of strategic focus into full statements. And those statements become your vision elements, uh, the uh, translatable actual vision. And then we'll wrap that around with a, a vision statement. Okay. Before we get into specifics of that, uh, let me just talk about another uh, vision that may or may not uh, be germane to you. And I call this the big dream vision. And once in a while, uh, I'll, I'll work with a leader and they have a, 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 a vision that uh, is uh, more distant and uh, more abstract than uh, what I call the translatable workable vision, actionable vision. And um, it, it, it supplements the why of purpose. Remember you said the reason for purpose is to talk about why we exist. Well, this 
superordinate, if you will, a big dream vision uh, goes beyond that and maybe serves uh, the the common good even more than the organizational uh, purpose and uh, and vision. So if you have such a thing, fine. Uh, don't get worried if you don't. Uh, even if you do, uh, the it's it's not exactly going to help you in terms of setting strategy. Okay, so what we need for that is a a translatable actual vision. Okay, but if you have a big dream vision, fine. Uh, don't rely on that. You still got to get down to earth and get to specific though. And speaking of the uh, the vision we're working on now, the translatable actual vision, it's also interim. I call it interim because uh, as you work with this, you're going to uh, reach out and have a planning horizon, whatever fits your business. Let's say three years. That's usually the case. And then you'll continue to work with this, the vision and the strategy behind that, and to continue to keep your your plan up to date your vision, but especially when we get to next week, the charting and strategic paths, keep that up to date. So I call it a kind of a strategy machine. So unlike the uh, identity, which is meant to be timeless, your uh, direction needs to be a, a work in progress at all times. Uh, so it's, that's why it's interim, interim. Uh, unlike the, the big dream, which is uh, kind of ongoing, uh, this is interim. All right. By the way, uh, Simon Sinek, S-I-N-E-K, you may have heard of him. He has a book, The Infinite Game, and he really talks about uh, this. This uh, He doesn't call it big vision, but the why, the, the reason for having why as a leader. And he talks more about the big dream why than what we talked about in purpose. So if that, that's of interest to you, you can you'll learn more about that through his book. Okay, uh, translatable actual vision. The definition is a unique, positive, and compelling image of the future for the common good a unique, positive, and compelling image of the future for the common good. And this is unique to you. It's tailored to you. And uh, it's unique because uh, it's not to be copied. This is you and your leadership team coming up with this. It's positive because it's something to be desired. It's it's compelling. It stirs your emotions. It motivates. And if you have a uh, come up with a vision and you don't have a fire in the belly of some sort, at least a tingle in the belly, uh, we got to get back to the drawing table on that one. Uh, drawing board, I guess. And it's for the common good, not for your personal gain or the leadership team uh, or a chosen few. It's for the common good of the organization. So that's the definition of vision and the components there. Okay, what it allows you to do, this translatable actual vision, is define what success looks like as you as you look down the road. And uh, as you have your vision uh, uh, elements, you can drive off those to uh, develop a strategy. And we'll be talking about as we go along there for uh, sequential elements, if you will, in, in uh, setting the direction. One we talked about already, and that's the uh, situation analysis and what I call the factor analysis. The second one is, is what we're doing now, uh, architecting, a, crafting a, a vision. The third one then is, it will be next episode. That's where we drive off and have strategies that come off of the vision elements in the uh, vision. And then we'll have two episodes regarding action planning. One is on uh, project specifications, and the second is actually the work planning. So those are the four pieces there, the uh, situation analysis, the vision, the strategies, and then the actions. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the, the process. I mentioned already the planning horizon. And again, you and your leadership team will determine you know, how far out in the future you need to look. That's befitting your business, your industry, and that sort of thing. Three years is a pretty good time. And you don't wait three years to renew this. This is an ongoing work in progress, if you will. Um, and then, it's, again, to repeat, the uh, you derive your uh, your strategy, your vision from your uh, critical few areas of strategic focus. And then as we're going to convert these into uh, vision elements. Uh, vision elements, again, are statements of conditions or evidence that exists when the vision is being achieved or is achieved. Uh, then you're going to uh, develop an umbrella statement or an overarching statement, call that a vision uh, statement, uh, that kind of wraps up the vision elements. Uh, recommend you probably start with the vision elements first. They're more concrete, specific, 
and then weave a thread through those vision elements, those four, five, six, whatever vision elements, and uh, see if you can wrap it into a powerfully worded one sentence that represents your vision statement. So two component parts of our translatable actual vision. There's a vision statement, the overarching umbrella statement, and then there's a series of, of bullets, if you will. These are when statements, when this happens, when that happens. These are evidences that you're achieving your vision. Okay. Let me give you an example of uh, this in action. And this is a, a example of a bank I worked with a, a few years back. And this is their uh, IT department. And uh, they were needing to go through a transformation here. And uh, as one of the uh, managers put it, we're like a dry cleaners. It's like our department, our client departments come up and say, okay, will you do this by this date? I'll leave it off and we kind of pick it up. And, you know, we clean up the, the thing and give them a program or whatever. And then they come by and we give it to them. And they figured that's not high value added. We can do a lot more than that as a IT department in this bank. So <clears throat> the vision uh, statement after they did the vision elements was uh, to partner with the bank's departments to effectively um, design and implement appropriate information technology strategies that enable them to constructively address business opportunities and challenges. So after they went through the vision elements, they wrapped it with that, with that uh, vision statement. They had four vision elements. I won't read the whole thing here to you, but kind of paraphrasing, um, they want, uh, it, we know we'd be successful in achieving this vision when uh, we have an environment and staff and vendor capability that significantly contribute to the bank's success by staying in the forefront of technology. That was one of the, they need to be up on their technology. Okay. The second one, uh, uh, an operational infrastructure designed uh, and, and operating that effectively supports the bank's current and future business activities. And then the third one is timely technical ideas and solutions provided. Uh, I'm abbreviating these. And the last one is timely user-friendly services to all employees. Uh, and the key uh, strategy then was they had it to implement those vision elements in their strategies. One of the key ones that they had to uh, kind of change their business model and they really needed to get involved, intimately involved with the bank's uh, departments, their business. They get to know the business. And then another strategy is they actually assign people to the various uh, departments. So they got to know the business. We're in, we're in tune with the meetings they had and so forth. And they were actually able to be proactive and instead of reactive in um, designing IT solutions for those departments. So a major transformational change. But it started off with, see, how do we move from a dry cleaner uh, to a, a uh, value-added IT department? And then we worked on the vision with those vision elements and then behind that, the strategies to, to implement that. So that's a good example. All right. So those are the main ideas. Again, consult the book. It'll, it'll help you uh, uh, anchor a lot of these thoughts, give you examples and so forth. And again, uh, to, to end up, the sequence is that you start with a situation analysis, and I call it a factor analysis because we identify the factors in the internal environment and then look at our internal capability to achieve that. That's the last episode. Review that if you need to. And then we come up with the actionable, translatable vision. And then behind that, we'll start that next week with strategies to uh, move forward, to to drive off of our vision elements, and then uh, the final thing would be uh, uh, actions, planning actions, scalable actions that fits the complexity of the various project. Okay, that's it for now. Hope you found it useful. And again, circle back and, and look at uh, previous episodes if need be by going to my website and also uh, uh, grab a copy of the, the book, uh, Making Into a Fill in Your Dreams of Leader. So you take care of yourself and you'll see you next time.